Hi, in this video I want to try and highlight the differences between mineral reserves and mineral resources. The ideas I'm going to discuss apply really to any type of geological resource, whether it's um, an iron ore deposit, as you can see in this photograph, or perhaps um, a hydrocarbon deposit. The same ideas apply. And it's where we start to see the interaction between geological understanding and economics. It's really where the money in geology starts to kick in. This diagram summarizes the ideas behind the difference between resources and reserves. It's designed to be illustrative. There are going to be no numbers uh, appearing on this diagram. Okay, let's start by looking at the difference between hypothetical resources and the conditional resources and total reserves. As the name would suggest, a hypothetical resource is one perhaps that we we're fairly sure exists, but we can't prove it. We don't know it's there. On the right hand side of the diagram are conditional resources and total reserves are known. We know the location of these, we know um, perhaps a bit more about the geology of them, certainly for the uh, reserves. So the boundary between the unknown re hypothetical resources and the known resources and reserves is a flexible one. And it's one that's determined by our degree of certainty that they exist. What moves that line, what moves the barrier between these, is geological exploration. Prospecting for these minerals or hydrocarbon deposits or any type of geological resource will turn a hypothetical resource into either a reserve or a conditional resource. Now clearly that begs the question of what the difference between the reserves and the conditional resources are. This is where we have to consider the role of economics. Because as with any type of resource geology, the key to it is understanding profitability. To become a reserve, a geological resource has to be able to be extracted profitably. So what does that mean? It needs to be economic to extract. If it's uneconomic, it becomes what we call a conditional resource. A geological deposit that we know exists but we, we're not going to extract it from the ground because it would cost more to extract than we could sell it for. So this is really determined by the price to cost ratio. If that ratio is less than one, it's a conditional resource. If it's greater than one, it can become a reserve. Now there are quite a few factors that can influence the, the boundary between a reserve and a conditional resource. Clearly, price is one of them. If the price of a resource, for example gold, increases, what was a conditional resource can become a reserve. Because it can be worthwhile to dig it out. With the increase in gold prices over the past few years, old gold mines, possibly even new prospects that may have had quite a low grade may well become worth digging out because the price has gone up and the cost to get it out perhaps has stayed. Other factors that can have an influence on this would include things like new technologies. For example, the development of directional drilling 
in the hydrocarbon industry means that smaller um, hydrocarbon traps that in the past weren't worth the uh, cost of putting a, a rig directly above them can now be exploited by having a rig in a different location with directional drills going off to lots of smaller hydrocarbon resources to be able to extract from them at a, at a lower cost than each of these having their own rig. We can also see other factors, for example environmental regulation, which if it increased and therefore put, puts costs up, may take a reserve and make it into a conditional resource by changing by that price-cost ratio. This is a diagrammatic uh, representation of these ideas. But it's something we need to bear in mind whenever we're looking at the concentration of resources, the um, nature of those geological resources, whether it's the size of an ore body, its, um, its grade, its um, recovery factor. All of those ideas will feed into understanding this diagram. So to conclude, we need to consider not only the geology of the um, resources that we're studying, but we, we also must consider the economics of them. With resource geology, it's the money that really controls what happens. The balance between the cost of extracting a resource against the price it can be sold for. This is made more complex by the volatility, particularly of prices of, of resources, but also the varying nature of costs. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.